Okay, so in order to close this modal, we need to add a header button at the top. So when we press it, it'll close. Now, in my experience, header buttons are really a pain to add yourself. Um, we can create custom ones. You can create custom uh, header buttons to be anything you like, text, icons, React components, you name it. Um, but trying to get the styling right and to match the rest of the uh, header bar is, is a real pain, it's such a headache. So a very common way to get around this is to use a package called React Navigation Header Buttons. Um, it's a very popular package. So what I'm going to do uh, is scroll down. I've gone to this page, I've scrolled down. So, so we're going to use this. So um, I'll copy the command. You can just type it out directly for me if you want. You don't have to actually uh, go to that page. Let me just stop my server real quick so I can run this. So npm i, which is install, react-navigation-header-buttons. So I'll press enter on that, and that should install that package. And we should be good to go on this. Let me start that up again. So npm start, and I think we can start using it now. Oops. Okay, so I'll go to, where am I going to? Uh, we're going to go to language select screen. And then what we're going to do is render the um, header button when the page is loaded. So because we're doing it after the page is loaded and the header button isn't directly related to this right here, it's part of the header, we're going to do it in a, in a side effect. So use effect block. So use effect, uh, which will add that import there. Um, and then in there, we have to put our arrow function. And then any dependencies, but we don't really want anything for this, so we'll just leave it as is. So we'll set some navigation bar properties, and in order to do that, we need to use the actual navigation property that's passed into this function. Um, so like I said earlier, we get a props uh, object here, and it's passed in, and props.navigation is the navigation property. So instead of doing it like this, where we say props.navigation, um, we could do it a different way to save us having to write props. Dot and just extract that navigation property directly. So we could either do it like this, uh, say const navigation, equals props dot oops, props dot navigation or we could do it without that line and just go to here add your uh, your curly braces and just write navigation so the curly braces in javascript i think i probably mentioned this it just extracts those properties from whatever object was passed in there so this will extract the navigation property so in fact what we can do with that is stick it as a dependency um up, up there i know so we didn't we didn't need a dependency but let's put navigation as a dependency for this so so this use effect block will only run if the navigation property changes. Okay, so let's say navigation dot set uh, options, and we can set the header title if we like. So we can set it to anything we want. Uh, if I save that, it should. Oh no, the the uh, app needs to be restarted. So let me um, close that down and press I to restart the app. I hadn't restarted the app since I. Uh, restart my server. So if I open up my modal, uh, you'll see hello is the title now. So this is where we set the title. We'll obviously come back and change that to a better title soon. So underneath that we'll have header right. So this is going to be a function component. So we need our arrow function there. Um, and we can just set this to. This is where we use our header buttons package. So header buttons and that should add the import here. And in there, we can add our um, item. And in here, we want an icon uh, name. And this can just be close. We want a color, and the color can just be um, colors. Oops, colors. So it should add that import dot text color. And then finally, an on press uh, equals, and then set this to. Uh, navigation dot go back that should be enough for us here uh, actually I think we, we need to add a header component if I save that you won't see anything yet well actually you know it crashes um, we, don't, we don't have the import for item so make sure you add that um, item import up there let me save it and refresh it um, so yeah currently you're not seeing anything there because we need the um, we need to set the header button component so if I go back to documentation, um, you see, uh, where is it? Search for it, header button component. So you see on the header buttons element, we have a header button component property. So it says the most important prop is this one, which defines how all icons rendered in children will look. So we can go back to our page at the top there. I'll just create it real quick up here. I'd say const. Uh, 
custom header button uh, equals props. It's going to be a React component, so put your arrow function there. And then all we're going to do is return um, header button. Make sure you add the import for header button. We've already got header buttons, but we want a header button. And this is a self-closing element, and then we just need a couple of properties on this, and we should be good to go. So the first thing we'll do is extract all the properties uh, using the spread operator. That's what that uh, three dots means. It means it's extracting all the properties that this um, object has and just sticking them on this element too. We're going to want to set an icon component. And for this, we're going to use ionicons. So I'm, I'm using ionicons, which is where this close icon name comes from. So whatever icon name you want to use there, make sure it matches up with the um, icon library. We'll set the icon size, so icon size um, is going to be 23. And then finally, color. Uh, and we can set this to, um, in fact, we'll set it to props.color uh, or colors.primary. So uh, basically, this means that if we pass a color property in, it will use that. Otherwise, it will use that. Okay. So now that we've got that custom header button um, component, we'll go to here, and on the header buttons, we'll say, um, header button component and just make it equal to that. If I give that a save now, do we see anything? Can't actually see. Let me uh, refresh the page just in case. And oh, I, I can see what I did. I, uh, I've added the curly braces here, but because I've added the curly braces, I need to return this because when you add curly braces, you're essentially saying it's going to be a multi-line function. So if I put a return there, then you'll see it. Uh, if you didn't add a return, you can just change these curly braces to um, just parentheses like this. And that essentially means that it's only a one-line function and it just returns whatever's on that line. So and if I save it, it'll do exactly the same thing. But now if I press that X button, it should close the model for us. So uh, there we go. We've got our close button. But let's change this from blue. I don't use blue there. I'll go back to app.js. And at the bottom, um, where, where we declare the modal page or the modal screen right here, so in the contained modal part, what we're going to do is uh, under under this uh, presentation contained modal, we're going to add another line. This would be header style. And I'll just set that to an object. Uh, and we'll just set background color to white. And that's it for that. If I save it, it should go white. Cool, it does. But obviously, you can't see the text. So we'll go ahead and update the, the text color. So underneath header style, I'm going to say header title style. Uh, and this can just be color, uh, colors.text color. Give that a save, should add that there. Cool. Uh, and also, I can also set the font family uh, to medium. OK, cool. Very subtle change, but it worked. I don't think there's a letter spacing uh, property here, letter spacing. Uh, no, okay, so I'll just leave the letter spacing off and I'll just add the font family. All right, great. So we'll still see the blue one when we go up to here, but this one now has a white header. If you didn't want that shadow underneath there, that line, I think there's a way to remove that by specifying the header shadow visible and set that to false, and that should get rid of that like that so it goes away. But uh, I will keep it, but it's entirely up to you. All right, cool. Let's add the title so that the title actually uh, is meaningful. Um, so I'll go back to home screen. And where we navigate, right here, I'll just pass in some options. So after language select, which is the screen we'll go to, we can specify an object, which are our navigation properties. So I can say title and set this to translate from. And then we just need to use that. So I'll go back to language select screen. And instead of setting the title to hello, I can set it to, um, well, it's in the properties. But because we've extracted navigation, we need to actually extract another one. We can just extract the root property. And from there, we can say const um, root equals. And from there, instead of hello, we just need to say uh, root dot params um, dot title. I think I should do it. Yeah, so there we go. Uh, but I don't like doing it like this because sometimes params can be null, I think. So what I'll do instead is say const uh, params equals root dot params or an empty object. So even if there's no params, it will just set it to an empty object. That means it won't crash when we try and access something here. Um, and then I can just uh, say title, oops, title uh, equals, and then params. So the, that'll extract the, uh, the title property from params. And then we can simply change this here to title. 
Okay, cool. So we've got that. Um, so let's go to the one below the other button, this one here, and make, hook that up too. So I'll just copy that whole line like that, and I'll go back down to here and replace that whole on press. Make sure you get that closing uh, closing angle bracket too. And this will be language, uh, sorry, translate to like that. Give that a save. And now if I press this one, the title should be translate to, and then this one will be translate from.